Hi, my name is Eric Beidelman, and I work on the Google Base Data API. The Google Base Data API allows you to programmatically manipulate your base items. We currently offer several client libraries, including C Sharp, Java, PHP, and Python. The libraries make working with your base items straightforward. Of course, you can choose a language of your own. I'm also going to demo a new tool I developed, the JavaScript Base Query Generator, which allows you to generate queries using the snippets feed. Let's get started. All right, so this is the Google Base homepage. And as I said before, Google Base is a free service that Google offers that helps you publish virtually any kind of information uh, for Google to index. And you can upload a variety of items, different categories, products, recipes, hotels. And to manage these items, we can go up to your personal dashboard. OK, so here's your personal dashboard where you can manage your items. And right now, I don't have any items, but we'll add some later using the API. So let's do that. So back at the Google Base page, we can access the API uh, directly through this link. That takes us to the Google Base Data API documentation, and I recommend checking out Getting Started. All right, so what can we do with the API? The API exposes a functionality of Google Base using a RESTful web interface. You can search items, you can discover metadata, attributes of an item, and then you can insert, update, and delete items. There's a few different types of feeds we're talking about here. The snippets feed, which is a public read-only feed, and you can see everyone's items. This is the URL for it. And the items feed, which is an authenticated feed, and it's only your items, so you can't see anyone else's items. There's two types of metadata feeds where you can learn and discover different types of categories. Item types feed, so let's take a look at that. These are the recommended item types for the English locale. You can see jobs, products, housing, similar to what we saw on the Google Base front page. And if we want to learn more about a specific item, for instance, the vehicles, we can use the attributes feed. And this is what that feed looks like. So you have different attributes of the item, the make, the model, the year. And Base also gives you the type of attribute, so integer for the year. And here are the snippets feed, example queries you can use. And you can get very specific. So using the BQ parameter here, search for a, a string, and then use the attributes that we just learned about uh, to, to construct queries. So let's see what this looks like. So this is our example query here. And we just searched for Honda vehicles in the year 2003 and 2004 that were within three miles of San Francisco. And here's what users have posted. So let's take a look at some of the sample applications. Uh, you can do that by this left nav tab over here. And again, I create a new tool to help you generate these query strings using the snippets feed. And this is what it looks like. If you need help on any of these parameters, these are the different possible parameters you can use. Um, you can just click on this, these question marks here and have some few examples and the possible values. And so most of the times, you're not going to know the recommended item types or the attributes. So what I've done here is incorporated the item types feed and the attributes feed and include that dynamically in this uh, JavaScript tool. So we can look for products, for instance, and that will load the attributes for the products. And let's, uh, let's search for iPod. So we type the value in, we highlight it, and you can see the query is generated for you. And just to be sure it's correct, let's click on that, and there's our iPod. So these are listings for iPods people have posted. And you can play around with these different parameters. Um, you can choose to show the URL encoded version of the uh, query. That's helpful if you're generating these queries in a scripting language. And again, you can play with these different parameters. So for instance, max results. We'll type in five max results per page and run the same query. And you can see we only have five this time. And here's another uh, great example of how to use the API, this API demo page. And this will allow us to experiment with inserting, updating, and deleting items. Uh, to use this, you'll have to authenticate first. So let's do that using OSUB. It'll take us to the approval page, where you can approve the use of your Google-based data. And we'll do that. It'll take us back to the application with our single-use token that we were assigned. And we'll need to upgrade that, because we're going to do a few inserts and a few deletes. And it just shows you the request that was sent to upgrade. Down here, we can actually use the API. We can use it to query, insert, update, delete, and batch response, which I won't cover. 
So let's just uh, query our personal items feed. Again, this is an authenticated feed, and we just authenticated. So we send HTTP get to the items URL, and the response we got was OK, because we're authenticated. And here's our items. Right now, I don't have any items, so let's uh, insert a few. We can do that by changing this to insert. And here's the structure of the XML that you need to send using the API. Uh, this is a simple recipe. Here's the, the title and a few ingredients in the content tag. And then using the G namespace, we highlight some attributes for that item, as we saw in the attributes feed earlier. So for instance, the cooking time is set to 10 minutes. So let's insert that. And in order to insert, you send an HTTP post to the items feed with the XML you're posting. And the response we got was a 201 created. Everything went well. Here's the XML that we just sent. And it's sent back to you because the server assigns an ID to your item. So here's the ID that we were assigned. And we'll need that in order to update or delete that item later. And we can verify that this action actually worked by going to our personal dashboard, refreshing that view. And there we go. Our recipe was inserted. We can verify that the contents were there. We set our ingredients. We set our cooking time. Going back to the demo, let's just demonstrate how we can delete that item. So we're going to send an HTTP delete operation to the item ID. And there's our request. It includes the ID for that item. And the response we got was OK. Again, to verify that, we can go back to our dashboard, refresh our items view, and there's no more items in our dashboard. All right, so now you should be able to get started using the Google Base API. I've only highlighted a few examples. For more information, you can check out our documentation pages at code.google.com. Happy coding.